Hello, this is Ed Chapman, and this video cast is part two in unit three on cell communication in the cell cycle. And in this video cast, we're going to focus on the functioning of a specific receptor system called the G protein coupled receptor. All right. Now, before you go on with this, it's very important that you can answer these five questions on this slide. If you can't answer these five questions, then you really need to go back and look at part one, because if you don't understand these concepts, what you're going to see next is not going to make a whole lot of sense. Okay, so it's really important that we do this stepwise. All right, G protein coupled receptors are, again, based in the plasma membrane. All right, so let's, let's orient where we are. This brown colored strip here represents the plasma membrane. This side down here is the cytoplasm side, and up here is the environment side or the extracellular matrix side. And floating in the extracellular matrix are signal ligands or signal molecules. And notice that the signal molecules have the right shape to fit into a receptor protein's active site. Okay, so ligand, receptor protein, notice the shape, the key, lock and key arrangement here. Now, this receptor protein is embedded in the plasma membrane. Part of it is facing out and part of it is facing in. This protein here, called the G protein, is attached to the cytoplasm side of the plasma membrane, along with another enzyme molecule over here. All right. Now, this G protein is currently in its inactive form, and it's going to function as a molecular switch. Currently, it's turned off, but we're going to turn it on by making this GDP, which is guanine diphosphate, become GTP. A, a lot like the way ADP becomes ATP, here we have a slightly different molecule with a different nitrogen base here, um, guanosine. So this is guanine diphosphate, and it's going to be activated with by phosphorylation. Okay, now it's pretty obvious what's going to happen. This signal molecule, or ligand, is going to interact with this active site in step two. So let's move on to step two. Notice now that the signal ligand has interacted with the receptor's active site, caused a conformational shape change of this receptor protein. Now when that happens, it can now interact with a G protein. This G protein now can be phosphorylated by changing the GDP in the GTP. And when that happens, this G protein is now in its active form. All right. Now it was activated by a signal ligand coming in from the outside. So signal comes in, causes a shape change here, activates the G protein. All right. Now, so this switch, this molecular switch now has been turned on. So let's look what happens in step three. In step three, the G protein changes its location and now um, interacts with this enzyme and it activates this enzyme. This enzyme then sets off a cascade of signals that can travel through the cytoplasm, which is going to eventually lead to our cellular response. So notice now that this G protein, which is now an, an on switch, so to speak, has now activated an enzyme. Also notice over here that the receptor protein is resetting, the um, ligand molecule is leaving, and now this is, whole system is ready to be reset to its inactive form, which is going to happen in step four. Now in step four, notice the, GD, the um, G protein has returned to its inactive form. It has disengaged from the enzyme, which has inactivated the enzyme. It's gone back to its original form, and the whole system is ready to receive a new signal. All right. Now this happens because the G protein, in addition to being to being activated by the receptor, also can deactivate itself by um, by acting as an enzyme. It's a GTPase enzyme, which means it breaks GTP down into GDP, resetting itself and making this now an off switch. Okay. So the G protein coupled receptor is normally in the off position until it's activated by a ligand signal molecule um, hitting the right receptor. Now, why is this important? The G protein coupled receptor is probably one of the more widespread signaling systems found in cells. It's been connected to signals that need to be sent and received in embryonic development. Okay, that's changing a zygote into an embryo into a fetus. Okay, everything has to happen in the right order, in the right place. It's a very complicated process. This process needs to be regulated, and one of the ways it's regulated is using G protein receptors. Uh, G protein coupled receptors are also used in our ability to see, to smell, and to taste. All right, so 
part of the ability or our senses is connected to what's happening on plasma membranes of cells both in our brain and in our sense organs. This tells us that the G protein coupled receptor pathway probably evolved very early and has been modified by evolution many times to accomplish many different forms of communication. And today, uh, they estimate that about 60% of all the medical or medicines that we use, all the pharmaceutical drugs that we use, both really old ones and new ones that are being invented every day, are functioning because they're interacting in some way with the G-protein receptor signal, either as competitive inhibitors, non-competitive inhibitors, allosteric inhibitors, all those things we've already talked about in previous units. So I think G-protein coupled receptors are very cool. Stop there. Thanks for listening. The next uh, video cast is going to cover another form of reception called receptor tyrosine kinases.